Good evening. We are delighted to welcome you to Discovery Bay International School and our primary school webinar. My name is Sheila Stamp. I'm the Director of IT and Communications at DBIS. And with me this evening are my colleagues, Susan Walter, Hello. our Head of Primary, Courtney Harris, our Hello. Assistant Head of Primary, and Helen Harries, our Admissions Manager. Hello. With the current pandemic, it has been impossible to give parents the opportunity to visit our school. And so our aim tonight is to give you some in insight into our primary school and to answer any questions you might have. We will kick off with a brief video of our primary school and then we'll have a question and answer session with Susan, Courtney and Helen afterwards. If you could type any questions you have into the chat box, we will answer them after the video. Susan, before we start, would you like to say a few words? I'd very much like to welcome you. Yes, thank you very much for taking the time to come and talk to us this afternoon. Um, we're here to answer all your questions. Hopefully the video will give you some of the answers, but uh, have a think while you're watching. Anything that you would like to ask us, then uh, we're very happy to answer. Our primary school is a unique and special international community school that puts learning at the heart of everything we do. Our philosophy is based around the holistic development of the whole child, ensuring that the children are given every opportunity to pursue their individual strengths and interests and develop their curiosity, independence, confidence and resilience when meeting new challenges. Whilst our curriculum is guided by the rigorous requirements of the English National Curriculum, it also reflects our unique international setting and celebrates our community's diversity. Mandarin lessons at DBIS are interactive and engaging and we offer three pathways to enable students of all linguistic abilities to achieve and learn effectively. Our innovative Discovery Lab enabled us to take a STEAM-based approach where science, technology, engineering, art and maths are an intrinsic part of our inquiry-based curriculum. We have a thriving creative arts department where students are encouraged to develop into confident communicators and performers in a supportive atmosphere. Our Globe Theatre is always buzzing with excitement during our shows, our concerts and our weekly assemblies. Our specialist PE teachers deliver a progressive curriculum that gives our students the opportunity to experience a wide range of physical activities in an atmosphere of enjoyment and personal and social development. When asked, many of the children will say that the library is their favourite space in our school. Hi, my name's Emily and I'll give you a tour of our awesome library. This is the seating area where the librarians read us stories. We come here every week before and after school and we can also visit the library to borrow new books. These pods are great to work in small groups or to work on a project. I love the library because it's so quiet and there's so many books to read about. We passionately believe that learning does not just take place in the classroom, so DBIS offers an outstanding range of quality extracurricular activities, giving our students the opportunity to pursue their personal interests and talents. Our wellbeing team offer integral support, guidance and care wherever it is needed, building on the pastoral care given by the class teachers every day. We value open and ongoing communication between school and home and actively develop a strong partnership with parents. As a parent myself, I understand just how important it is that your child is happy in school. I'm hugely proud of our students, our teachers and our school, and I'm confident that any child will thrive in our inclusive, caring and in collaborative environment. Well, we hope you found that uh, video enjoyable and it gave you an idea of what our primary school is like. Um, while we're still waiting for some questions, please, please feel free to type them into the chat box um, on the actual webinar. Um, we do get asked a number of things regularly on our school tours, um, so I'll kick off with a couple of those. Uh, for example, Susan, could you elaborate a bit on what 
the curriculum does it, uh, what curriculum does the school follows at DBIS? Sure, yeah, we are an English national curriculum school, so we follow the um, English national curriculum to an extent. So we take our rigor and expectations and our end of year expectations from the English national curriculum, but we teach it through a very different context. Um, we are based in Hong Kong, we're based in, in the beautiful Discovery Bay here. Um, so a lot of our geographical learning, for instance, is based in this region rather than in the UK. Um, our history, history and studies that we do will be based again around the, the Asia region. So we take the expectations from that curriculum, but we actually apply it in a very different context. Uh, we design our teaching through a concept based uh, approach. So it's taught through inquiry. Um, and the children understand their learning and piece it together through concepts. And that's done through our uh, discovery units, which are bespoke and written by the staff here for, for the students to really represent learning that interests them, that meets their needs and that covers the, the curriculum. Um, we have many different uh, discovery units. Maybe, Courtney, you could share a couple of them. That would be yeah, good. Yeah, sure. So uh, through our discovery units, we cover the subjects such as science, history, geography, and each year group has different uh, units to ensure a progression across the primary school. The units are really exciting mm -hmm. and really engage the children. Uh, in year three, for example, we have an active planet uh, uh, unit. In year four, ancient civilizations. In year five, uh, space. In year six, migration. All of the units are really engaging and the children really enjoy them. Could you tell us a bit about the extracurricular activities at school? Yes, we, we are very proud of our extracurricular activities as well. We, we have a huge number. For a fairly small site, we actually pack in the, the, the extracurricular activity learning for, for all the children. So we have a, a, a really high level sporting provision for all the students. So um, from swimming through to football, hockey, uh, netball. Oh, my goodness, I, I could go on and on about sport. We do all kinds of sports here and the children love it. We're a very outdoorsy community and uh, we spend a lot of time outside um, enjoying the the local surroundings, but but in those sporting activities, competing against other schools across Hong Kong and also within the Faber CS region of schools across Southeast Asia, our athletics teams uh, will often uh, fly out and take part in in Southeast Asia wide competitions, and we do really well um, in those areas. So sport plays a huge part in that, but also we are very proud of our creative arts programme. So we do an awful lot with music in terms of orchestra. We have a crash and bang club for our youngest children, and that's exactly how it sounds. Um, <laughs> we have primary choir. We have a, an early years one and two choir, but the primary choir is enormous. We have a lot of children signing up for that every year. Um, we have orchestra. We have uh, primary strings, um, recorder, um, the samba club. That's a good one. Um, so the... the musical element of, of, of what we do here is is very well received but then we also have clubs creative clubs so art and crafts uh, chess board games uh, we have a young entrepreneurs group that's very popular um i i could talk to you for a very long time about our extracurricular activities i think the thing we're most proud of is the fact that all of them are run by our school staff so uh, we don't there were no extra charges for our ECA program um, and all of the sessions are led by teachers and educational assistants who work at the school already and know the children really well. So uh, it's a volunteer program for the for the staff um, everybody's involved. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a really lovely, um, lovely part of our school, something we're very proud of. Please feel free to answer, um, put your questions into our chat. We very interested to hear if you've got anything you'd like to ask um, the panel tonight. Um, while we're waiting for some questions, um, we have another one that uh, gets asked quite often, the experiential learning. What are the opportunities at, of that at school? Good, again, and I think um, as if some of you have joined um, our colleagues in the early years um, webinar, you've probably heard about some of this already, but we have a very active uh, forest schools programme that comes up through the early years and we've started to introduce that across our year three and some of our year four classes um, but we're very privileged in where we are we're in like I said in in the middle of Discovery Bay we're a 10 minute walk away from the beach um, and we're a sort of an hour's hike away from some of the the really scenic parts at the top of the hills behind excuse me behind the school so we're constantly outside um, we have staff here who are very passionate about learning outdoors, um, about sustainability and all, and, you know, that, that whole agenda is very important to us as a school. So 
we run residential camps for all of our children from year three upwards um, here in Hong Kong, in different parts of Hong Kong. Uh, we take our year six children away on a residential camp, um, either to China or uh, potentially to Thailand. Um, so there's yeah, yeah, there's an awful lot of opportunity to be outside. And actually what you find when you walk around the primary school is that I might walk past a class of children learning. If in Mandarin, they've got their iPads in front of them and they're recording themselves speaking in, in Mandarin Chinese. Or I might park, walk past our memorial garden and there's a whole class sitting outside um, listening to their class novel. So there's a lot of outdoor learning that happens every day as part of our daily activity. So um yeah, it's, it's something that we're, we're privileged to be able to offer. Um, we do have a question, a uh, direct message. Uh, hello, may I know the time allocation on STEM and Mandarin or Spanish, please? Wow. Spanish, um, there's a time allocation, but only in secondary. So the languages that we learn in the primary school is English and Mandarin. Um, Mandarin, had it, it depends which year group you're in, but on average, you'd get three 45-minute lessons a week for Mandarin with our specialist Mandarin teachers. Um, and then what was the other STEM? So they have the children. STEM is much more complicated because, of course, it, it involves so many of the subjects across the curriculum. Um, with regard to mathematics, the, the M part of STEM will start at the back, <laughs> work that way in. Um, mathematics is taught every day in the, in the primary classrooms. The E is engineering, I think. And that's that's more of a focus within their learning technology les lessons that the children have. And they have that for an hour a week in the learning uh, in the discovery lab here. But the use of technology and that approach to problem solving and engineering is, is something that will also translate a lot into the everyday classroom. So our young um, entrepreneurs in year four, um, that that unit of discovery is, is highly based around that that element of the curriculum. Um, art. Um, if we're steaming rather than stemming, um, is mm -hmm. taught within the primary classrooms, again, within the discovery unit. So that depends on which year group and which unit the children are studying. Um, e, we've done E, haven't we? Science. ST, technology science. and science. science and technology. So technology mm -hmm. is, again, taught in the discovery lab. We have uh, specialist learning technology teachers who teach that subject. But again, that's something that they bring back into the classrooms with them. So all of our children have access to a one-to-one -one device. Um, and so technology and that use of technology to support um, and enable learning in, in different ways is something that you see every day in the classroom. So that, that's a big focus for us. Um, and science, of course, is, is interwoven through everything that we do. The, the discovery units are, are very heavily based around the teaching and learning of science, that problem solving, investigation, all of those elements of the curriculum are, are woven in really to our discovery units. Do you want to describe the discovery lab? little bit weird, we saw here. it uh, on the video if you saw the video um we saw spencer and felicity in the discovery lab um and lane i think was up there as well and it's it's an amazing space we had i think it used to be three separate classrooms and we knocked them all down um and the the discovery lab was designed to incorporate the the space from the three classrooms but with all movable windows or not windows walls and doors and you can section it off into different sizes and areas but it's full of technology but not just your laptops or chromebooks or ipads we've got robots we've got b bots we've got all kinds of 3d printers a green screen mm. the green screen room we're, we're really proud of it's it's like a a circular semicircular room so you can go in um, and it just looks like a, a circular wall but actually you can open it so that it becomes a circle <laughs> in itself sort of closes itself in it's a great little studio the children love using it um yeah it's, it's a very exciting space and the, they they really enjoy spending time up there and then one of the things that they um we're talking about that so many of the children were talking about on their return to school recently was that, that they could get back into the discovery lab and explore and play um, and learn up with all of those resources. Mm. Please feel free to add any more questions. Um, we really enjoy hearing um, what you might like to ask us. Um, in the meantime, uh, there's some other things like, do you want to describe a little bit more about our classroom facilities in general? Well, the school as a whole is, is, is packed full of exciting resources. I mean, again, we're sitting in the <laughs> library at the moment, um, but you saw in the video right at the start of this webinar, um, our facilities are, are, are ranging from our swimming pool upstairs 
it's actually on the building next to me, but it's on the roof. Um, but we can, it's an outdoor pool. It's now heated, so we can use it all year round when the EDB let us open it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've got shades that can pull over the top to, to protect the children from the, the heat when it is hot. Um, we've got an enormous gym, or literally up above my head here. Um, and then we've got all our outdoor spaces as well, the pitch and the netball court and, and the outdoor spaces that we use um, for the children's playtimes and for the teaching of sport. Um, and then, of course, we've got very well-resourced classrooms. I've talked a little bit about the Discovery Lab, or, uh, lab already. You can see the library. It's an amazing space. And uh, as Emily says in the video, it's a space that the children love to come into. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of children that will choose to come in during the break times and sit and play chess with each other and others that just disappear into a book and uh, thoroughly enjoy the environment. So that's all supported by a range of um, classrooms that uh, basically we've, we have whole your sort of fairly regular standard classroom, but we have a lot of adjoining rooms. So we have extra little spaces and nooks and crannies for groups of children to explore and to work in, in smaller groups. Um, But the layout of our classrooms is not what you would call traditional. We have a lot of learning spaces that, that feel and give that impression of a a very relaxed, safe environment. So the children, sometimes you can go in and you might have children working at a standing desk or they're sitting huddled together on a sofa um, or they're sitting more traditionally like we are today behind a desk. Um, So, uh, yeah, I wish we could bring you in to come and have a look at them. But um, there are environments that the children really enjoy and and, and they tell us they feel safe. They love to come to school and uh, they enjoy the resources that we have. Um, one thing about school is uh, our diversity and the internationalism. Do you want to um, explain a little bit more about that? Well, we have 40, over 41, 40, I think, nationalities. 54, 54 now. 54, mm-hmm. wow. So, yes, we, we have a very diverse um, cohort of children and staff across the school. I mean, we have England here, we have Wales, <laughs> and we have New Zealand, just sitting talking to you. So, um we <clears throat> celebrate, I think, all the best bits of, of, of all the cultures in the school wherever we can. I think it's not as simple as saying we have festivals and we have food fairs and, um, and we celebrate different um, celebrations from different religions and different cultures because it's so much more than that. I mean, our internationalism really is woven into our curricula. Um, and like I mentioned before, when if we're teaching about um let's say we're talking about traditional tales we won't be teaching just about english traditional tales we'll be teaching about traditional tales from many many different cultures across the world um because our children are global um you know you will ask a lot of them where are you from and some will say hong kong some will give you two or three different countries mm. some really aren't sure they they because they are genuinely citizens of the world and um yeah. and we celebrate that and uh, you know we we talk in many different languages on the playground and we enjoy the fact that we bring different things to the table and um so it, it's but we're very it's very interwoven into everything i'm saying in a very long-handed way <laughs> do you want to talk a bit about inclusion at the school yes um inclusion we have a very dedicated team of inclusion teachers and eas who support children i think it's if you had to ask one thing that perhaps makes us more proud than anything else it will be the fact that our community school represents our community it truly does um and we celebrate any child if we can offer them a place and we can support their needs then then we welcome them to the school so we have a a team of experts who work alongside the class teachers sometimes children are withdrawn from classes for extra support sometimes that that support comes into the classroom on their behalf but um they are very well looked after, um, all our children actually. We support children who have um, needs in accessing their learning, but we also support those children who excel in learning and who need that extra level of challenge and that extra level of, of encouragement to really see what they can achieve in their own right. So that personalised approach to learning is something that doesn't just sit with us at both ends of that spectrum. It's it's something that is really um, integral in a, in our teaching and learning across the school, but um, yeah, it's it, it adds a richness that I think we're very lucky to have. 
We also have um, a staff wellbeing team. So on the other side, the children's wellbeing is really looked after. They have access to an amazing school counsellor. We have a learning for life curriculum where we learn all those personal skills that they need to take them forward through their lives. So not only are we looking after their learning needs, we're looking after their emotional and wellbeing needs as well. Mm. We do have another question. Um, it says, thank you so much for the deep explanation. With regard to the application, should I submit online together with all the after school certificates like sports and music or present them during an interview, please? Uh, hi, at, um, at application, we would encourage you to submit everything you have um, at that point uh, for, for various reasons. That gives us a, um, a, a good outline on a good indication of what, what, your, what your child is achieving and it gives us lots to talk about at interview and uh, to see where you are um, before before you actually um, have the interview. So please submit everything first. It's, it's good to have all that information. Mm. I think one of the things the children love to do, it's, it's nerve wracking when you, we're asking a young child to come and talk to the likes of me or to Courtney, not that we try and be frightening, but <laughs> genuinely they don't know who we are. Mm. So the more information we have from you about them, the more easy it is for us to ask relevant questions yes. that they can latch on to quickly. Yeah. And we get a much truer feel of who they are as individuals and, and what they enjoy. Um, so that will certainly help with their application. Yeah. And especially in these times of online interviews, <laughs> it's much easier to have everything in advance. Yeah. I've got another question. Are you going to share the recording of the preschool webinar, please? Yes, it is in fact ready online. If you go to our website, um, there is a page called webinars under the admission section and you'll find a recording of the early years one there. So we, are there any more questions? In, There's one I can see like? there, I think about transition. Transition from kindergarten to primary. That's no, okay. Um, transition, it's something that we work very closely with. Um, if you do get the chance to watch the Early Years um, webinar, that would be great. You will meet Hannah Cole, who's the head of Early Years down there at the moment. Um, she and I work very closely together. Um, Courtney's doing a lot of work um, on the transition at the minute. Matt, you might want to talk about that a little bit. Actually, yeah, Courtney. sure. So um, as we alluded to before, this year is a very special year. So we wouldn't do things quite as we normally would this year. But going forward, uh, we would have a really detailed transition plan going from um, the early years which is uh, EY2 to primary um, the year three teachers would go down to the EY2 classrooms and meet the children so that if the children are familiar with those teachers before they even come up to primary those children would also have opportunities to come up to the year three classrooms and see those environments mm. so they feel really familiar and comfortable when they do start year three uh, we would also have a buddy program where children from the primary would buddy up with those children who are coming up to primary the following year so that they have people that they can ask questions to and also just see out on the playground and comfort them as well. Uh, we also make an effort to make the environments look similar. So again, that they feel comfortable. Those are just some of the things that we do to try and ensure the transition is really smooth. And it's also a process that we're constantly adding to and seeing what else we could possibly do to make them feel really comfortable. I think we're, we're lucky as well in the fact that we're on two sites, but you have we have our nursery and reception children down at the early years site. And then our early years one and two classes are actually on the same site as primary. So in that sense, they are used to coming to our primary building. They are used to the environment um, that they're their early years classes are in. So the transition to year three really is literally going to a classroom upstairs. <laughs> Um, but they can still see where they used to be in year one and they can still see whenever they're out and about in the playground, their year two classes. So that helps ease it a lot. And it means that because we're on the same campus, um, we can talk on a daily basis to the children's previous teacher. Um, we do mix the classes every year and we do that on purpose so that um, we're an international school and mobility will obviously be higher than it might be in a, in a, a home school. So we want to make sure that the classes remain balanced and even, but we want to give the children the opportunity to develop those wider social networks. And, and so we're constantly talking to each other about 
um, which class to place children into, how they're going to thrive in those different environments, which best te which teacher is best suited to support the needs of that class. Um, but like I say, because we're all on the same campus, it makes that an awful lot easier. And just to add to that, if you're coming from a different kindergarten, um, then we can offer uh, uh, an introduction, a little taster session where you could join one of the primary classes mm -hmm. just for a taster session before you actually came to uh, be enrolled. Uh, we've got a few more questions now. I think the first one is about um, service. Uh, are there any society care activities or events in DBIS, please? There are quite many. Um, we have a house system here. So we have children allocated to different houses. Um, so you'd be lions, eagles, wallabies and dragons. Dragons, thank you. <laughs> and I'm a dragon and I nearly forgot dragons. Um, so all of the children are allocated to a house and all of the houses support a different charity. So that's that's how we sort of start introducing that concept of, of service across the school. Um, we will support charities that differ from the likes of Hong Kong or action impact hong kong sorry thank you impact hong kong that works with homeless um families here in hong kong then we have another charity that works with an orphanage in africa um we have another charity that's focused around supporting children with down syndrome so there are many different avenues to that too so it's, it's a it it gives us the opportunity to introduce the children to, to many aspects of need across our community and across the world um, Box of Hope is a big one for us. The children uh, create boxes of items that can be given to children who have really very little at Christmas and they really enjoy that. They, that's a really good charity. This year, we weren't able to physically collect the boxes, but they did that online. So they would donate um, money towards a box and identify the items that they wanted to put in it. So we were still able to do that. And I think it's important actually to think about the creativity that's come out of the situation. We might not have been able to be in school quite as much as we wanted to, but the creative approach that that's had to be adopted in order to support learning for, for all the children and still maintain that presence in, in areas of service, still maintain that presence in outdoor learning um, has, has forced us to, to really dig deep and come out with some really, I think, um, great creative um, and positive ideas to support learning and and that box of hope was one of them so um yeah well, i remember it, it was a year or two years ago mr haynes was leading our english across the school and he had set up a sort of a, a challenge and the children had to write letters to local businesses and it was all linked in with our sustainability approach and sustainability week that we had at the school and I think something like 600 letters were sent out to local businesses but plastic straws literally disappeared overnight um, and we do wave the DBIS flag for that you know our, our children were passionate about it they didn't just send the letters they actually went into McDonald's and Starbucks and and all of the the vendors and and argued their case and and very quickly I think you'll agree that that DB is a very paper straws only um, <laughs> so something that we're very proud of our children for doing that yeah. we've got some more questions now uh, we are looking to enroll our kids who are in year three and six shall we fill in the same form with the year one batch um, for enrollment it is the same form um, in throughout the school so whichever year you want to enroll your your child into it's the same form but we need an application for each child individually um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by the year one batch. If that's um, a year one child, then yes, it would be the same form. If you want to clarify, then I'm, I'm happy to follow up on that answer. Another question, what is the student turnover roughly? Oh, that, that varies. If you'd asked me that last year, I'd have said about 10%. Mm. If you asked me this year, I'd have said it's higher. Mm. Um, but we are blessed in so many ways. And I think primarily in the fact that as we're leaving or we're losing students, which is something that we don't want to be doing, but it's happening, sadly. Um, we are being well supported with new students coming in. I think it's fair to say our classes in primary are still full and mm -hmm. uh, we're doing really well. Um, but we're used to transitions. You know, we are an international school and it, it happens all the time. We have a program uh, where well, I will personally meet, um, Courtney and I will do that, meet with their, the students who are leaving. We have a little bag of goodies that they take with them as reminders and, and to help them have a good goodbye, or we call it seeing the good in goodbye. Um, the children get something out of that. And, I, and the feedback is interestingly be that often their families, when they go home and talk their families through that, they've 
actually gotten a lot out of that process as well. So we're very aware that there is transition at the school, but we I think we're good at welcoming children in. We're, we've all been new at some point in time. Um, and even if we're not new to Hong Kong, we've been new to this particular school. So we understand what that feels like. And I think we support our children out of the other side or the other end of it um, in, in the same way. And I hope that they leave with a, a, a positive feel about the school and 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 understand that they that you know they're on the, the verge of their next adventure. So um yeah. And um, we have another similar question. And what is the staff turnover? For staff teaching? turnover, we're we we're, we're good. If I'm I'm thinking about generally on the international forum. And again, this year, I think we've been lucky to maintain our um, turnover rates. I would say our average tenure for a teacher, normally within an international school, where the, the, the experience that I've had would say that your, your international average stay would be anywhere between three and four years. Um, but here, I think if we were to look at our staff here, I mean, this is my fifth year. This is your eighth, eighth year. year. Sure. Seven. seven years um we have some people who land in discovery bay and something happens and they don't go <laughs> they don't leave um we are seeing some leave obviously for covid related reasons um sometimes just for a new challenge but i think what i'm, I'm very proud of from a staff development point of view is the fact that many of our teachers when they do leave they leave for a promotion um they need they leave for a bigger area of responsibility in their new school because they're ready to do that. You know, we're, we're very proud of our teaching team here um, and I'm very proud of the professional development opportunities that we give them um, and the fact that, you know, they're, they're ready when they go, they're ready to take the next step. Um, and we try and keep them, of course, to do that within <laughs> our school, but there are only so many opportunities that we can offer. So um, our staff turnover isn't too bad. And, and I think, you know, I'm just was mentioning Miss Cole, who is the head of the early years. I think this is her 11th or 12th year at the school. Um, and she is somebody who has proved really that she didn't come in as head of early years. She came in as a teacher and, and she's had a phenomenal um, career at the school and, and developed hugely. She's a, an amazing head of, of early years now. So she's just one example of, of where we can keep really excellent staff and, and maintain that feel and that culture of the school. That's something that we passionately believe in. Um, you know, students are at the, the, the heart of everything that we do here. Um, and we do have a very long corporate memory, despite the, the, the sort of turnover that you would expect. I've got another question here. Um, how many students in each class? Well, 25, sometimes 26. Uh, but it certainly won't be any more than that. Um, our classrooms are designed to, to accommodate that number of students um, and that works well for us. But, yeah. And what is the student teacher ratio per class? It depends on what the age of the children are, to be honest. Um, per class, you will always have a, a class teacher that, that, that leads that class, of course. If you're in uh, primary, then you've got there. We also have two educational assistance across each year group so you have four classes four teachers and two EAs in that year group but you've got to remember we also have specialist teachers that teach PE that teach Mandarin that teach learning technologies that teach something else that I'm oh like mm, music. music music thank you <laughs> um, and teach music and we have EAs that support those teams as well so then you look at our inclusion team you look at our um, EAL English as an additional language team um, and you add every, every, all of those into the mix, the, the, the ratios are very high here, um, but they're not always in the same classroom at the same time, so. I've got a question about homeschool students. Um, historically, have homeschool students uh, been able to get into primary successfully? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you, we are so used now to, to welcoming children in to DBIS from all kinds of backgrounds, different curricula, different languages, different year <laughs> groups, um, and different stages of their education. And, and that will include children that are homeschooled, of course. Um, we, for instance, if, if children join us from Scandinavia, they might not have been to school and they might join us in year three mm. because they haven't started school yet. Whereas a child from the UK might have been in school since they were four, a child from Scandinavia might not have started school and they might be seven. Um, so if a child is homeschooled, then they're, they're going to have certain skills and attributes that they bring with them. They're gonna have gaps 
Um, but we're very good and very adept at, at figuring out who are you as a person? Where are your strengths? What do we need to help you develop? Um, and, and we do that all the time. So we're, we're, we're experienced in handling that. You know, we are not um, a selective school. So children come to us with all kinds of backgrounds. Um, but we are very good at baselining and, and, and getting a really clear picture of academically. OK, where are we socially? Where are we? What can we do to best support you um, and take your learning forward? So um, but that's for every child, no matter what their background is. A, a child who might have been at school the whole time might have significant gaps in their learning for a variety of reasons. A child who's been homeschooled might actually be further ahead in terms of the curriculum and their learning because they've had a one-to-one -one relationship with a parent or a, a tutor at home. So it's always done on a one to, you know, a, an individual basis and, and looking at the individual needs of that child when they come in. Well, we seem to have run out of questions. Is there anything else anybody else would like to ask? Um, is there something coming through? It's um, regarding school visits. Um, so this is why we're doing these webinars at the moment is unfortunately, we, we are, we're not able to have um, our school tours run as we would like them to. Um, so we're doing these in the meantime. Uh, and then as soon as government's restrictions do ease, then we, we will be welcoming everybody in to, to um, have a look around properly. I think it's fair to say, you know, that this is, we're living in a digital age where we've all upskilled. I mean, the fact that we're talking to you through a screen is quite weird in, in many senses, but also very normal now. Um, the fact that you've logged into online conferencing software, the fact that our seven-year-olds can use online conferencing software much better than I can. <laughs> um, it's just indicative of, of the time, isn't it? And I think, I think what you'll see when, you know, I, I hope we've been able to give you the impression of the sort of school that we are. We've been very um, open and, and spoken to you in the same way that we would if you were here. We just haven't physically been able to take you around and we haven't been able to introduce you to any of our students here. But I think if you met them, you would realise that they are just the reason we come to school every day you know they are sparky they are full of energy they're excited about their learning they're inquisitive um they're questioning um and they are just a great great bunch of students to work with and i i think you would uh, you would certainly agree with that if you were to come into the school and see them in action oh we've got another question um at present are the lessons delivered online or there, is there a regular school for students? There is a very regular school for students, but it's only until one o'clock in the afternoon. So we've moved the start time earlier to eight o'clock in the morning, or 8.15 for primary, and then we finish at 1 p.m. So we've stretched our morning. So all of our subjects now have the opportunity to be taught face to face with the students in school. Um, and then when they go home for a later lunch at home, uh, then there are afternoon activities after that set online that the children can access um, should they want to at that time. So there's no live teaching as such in that last element, but they've, they've been through a whole day's worth of learning um, before they've gotten home. So we're, we're so grateful to have them back in. There's a real liveliness and, and noise of learning across the school every morning. So it, it does feel normal in the mornings, but of course the afternoons are a little different still. I think we're probably coming to a close of our webinar. Thank you very much for all the time you've given us. And uh, if you have any more questions, please email us or visit our website, fill out our inquiry form, and we'd be very happy to get back to you. And as soon as we can welcome you into the school, we would uh, be very happy to. So thanks again for attending and um, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.